What an incredible woman I have for you guys today. Her name is Dr. Heather Wild. She's an Ivy League educated, accomplished diagnostician and functional medicine practitioner. She's an elite results coach and master practitioner of NLP and hypnosis. Um, she believes that there are three main drivers of disease, which are stress, inflammation, and toxicity, which we keep hearing over and over and over from all of these amazing naturopathic doctors who know what they're talking about. <laughs> so she's going to get into that and break that down really well for you guys today. Um, she does have a, it's a program called it's the wild vitality detoxification program. So if you're interested, um, as you hear her speak, you can check that out. Her website, is naturopathicmd.com. We will link that up in the show notes and on Instagram, she is naturopathicmd. So that's her handle on there. She's awesome. I'm excited for you guys to hear from her. So we'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Dr. Heather Wild. Okay. So really excited to talk to you, Heather, because I saw, you know, when I was learning about you that you have a background in NLP hypnosis and also medicine, you know, Ivy league educated. Like I, I I was like, okay, I love her already. Like she is like, what do we need to heal people? You know? And so can you talk about first, like why you decided, you know, with everything that you're doing on the, you know, the body, the inflammation, the toxicity and all that, why you also decided to get this training in NLP and hypnosis. And some people may not know what NLP is. So if you could kind of describe that too. Sure. Well, I was pre-med at Cornell and I had my concentration in neurobiology and I recognized that the construction of human consciousness is both physical and genetic and nature, but also nurture. And so there's this massive part that, you know, we have our brains developed from how we interact with the environment. And we've seen more studies about um, ACEs, which are adverse childhood events and how, if you have a lot of negative ones, then you have a shorter lifespan. Mm. And so it started with that. And then I went into naturopathic medical school and they had a section on mind body, which I was like, this is going to be great, right? We're really going to see the interaction of how our thoughts and our emotions interact with the body physically and physiologically. And unfortunately, the instruction that I got in school was something that wasn't I was like, yeah, I mean, we were trained in acupuncture and I understand how energy moves through the body and all of that. And still like there's some default operational programming that we're not accessing right. very powerfully. Yep. And so that's when I got trained in hypnotherapy mm. and I used it in my practice for all kinds of things because we can talk all day long about how it's important to exercise and it's important to get your sleep and you need to eat your vegetables. And everybody knows that nobody mm. hears that. And there's like, you know what? You're right. Like that. Wow. I've never heard that before. Wow. That's <laughs> some real earth shattering stuff. Right. <laughs> Said no one ever. And um, so what is it? Mm-hmm. What is it that keeps people from being able to stop doing what's making them ill? Or, you know, these, these deep neurological programming processes that they're not even aware of. And so Mm -hmm. I, my first year out of uh, university, I traveled with a Jungian therapist who was also a, you know, political economist. And I did research for her about the impact of the environment on the human organism and health. And this was in 2000. And So that really got me started on the path to, you know, the detoxification and how absolutely important that is, but also looking at the construction of the consciousness of a human that was outside of neurobiology and neurotransmitters. And so all of the unconscious, which is created, you know, when we're babies to seven, right, ish, and then you have another whole section after that, that's more social. And I love when uh, Joe Dispenza really brought into the forefront that Mm -hmm. neurons that fire together, wire together, and Mm -hmm. we get set up into these habits where people don't even recognize what they're doing. It's an automatic process. 
And so I learned neuro-linguistic programming, which is NLP, and people know it from like Tony Robbins and Mm -hmm. Get Your Power Stance and Mm -hmm. anchoring and the importance in sales and rapport, but really it's tremendously powerful to be able to recognize these unconscious processes and strategies Mm -hmm. that get our needs met, right? So that when you're three years old and you throw yourself on the ground to get your mother's attention and you scream and you get her attention, you've learned that that right. works. Right. It's not so effective when you're 40, but we still have these things that are similar, right? Yeah. And so being able to recognize what they are, shining the light of awareness on how that doesn't necessarily serve anymore, and how can you really shift the neurology through hypnosis and through different patterning and processes to help shift the way that people show up so that they can get different results. Mm -hmm. Well, kudos to you for like, you know, doing whatever needs to be done to heal the people. And the way I see it, we're very much on the same wavelength. And the way I see it is like the body and the soul are kind of like an infinity symbol. So like, if, you know, if your body is struggling, we're in this plane, we're in this dimension, we have bodies, our consciousness is hooked up to these suckers. And if they're not doing well, it affects our consciousness. You know, if you have no serotonin, very low serotonin in this little human form we're in, that's going to affect things. You know, everything's harder, everything's sadder, everything's back. If you have real low dopamine, it's like, why am I an addict? You know, (laughs) like, so it's like that matters, the body matters. And then It's also the soul is impacting the physiology. And I'm sure you've read the biology of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton, because he's pretty big on this stuff. And I use that. I use that book as a tool in my coaching because it's so helpful to understand. I mean, he is showing as a cell biologist who was an atheist that our thoughts change how our cells function, our thoughts, not to mention you're talking environment. And I know, you know, all this, but it's just, oh, it like even things that we're not aware of in our environment impact like waves, you know, and all sorts of frequencies change how our cells function, you know, and think if you're let's actually, I really want to back up into this adverse child child events thing. Cause I have taken a, a deep dive into that too. And it is heartbreaking, Um, in terms of like, think of that, like you're a kid and you're growing up in this environment, which gosh, like, I feel like most adults, like I'm 40, I feel like most adults, you know, somewhere in like a 20 year span of me and probably even still had a lot of adverse child events. Cause there just wasn't a lot of psychological awareness back then. And so, yeah, it's like, okay, your kid does something bad. You shame them and yell at them and punish them and isolate them. And, you know, like, and so can you talk a little bit about what you've learned, what you've seen in adults in terms of how their childhood environment has affected their health? Absolutely. Uh, i work a lot of this with this on um, even currently with my um, brother's company because he developed a supplement specifically to help child's brains grow better and be more resilient Mm -hmm. because let's look at neurologically what a brain is made of healthy fats right so if a child is only eating you know chicken nuggets and mac and cheese, you have a huge deficiency in the healthy things needed to make a brain work yeah. optimally, right? And there's other, you know, neurological impacts from artificial flavors and colors and all of that. So those are things we don't even see that are definitely affecting how kids can show up and their behavioral event, you know, ability Let's- to pay attention. Let's give a little plug for that. Cause I, I this is so crazy. I, I, this always happens with the podcast universe, <laughs> but like, um, Thanks, I was universe. just talking to my 12 year old son about this today. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, this, just this morning before he left for school, I'm like, Hey, I just ran out of fish oil, but we got to make sure I'm getting more. And we got to make sure you're taking that because your brain just literally can't operate well if it doesn't have, so I'm assuming there's omega threes in this, yeah. but what, what is, what did, what's in it? I'm just curious. So it's, um, EPA, DHA, mm-hmm. trans resveratrol, mm-hmm. um, curcumin, Mm. Uridine and alpha GPC are the big ones. And the cool thing oh, wow. for kids, it was developed as a concussion supplement. Both my brothers played football for Brown. Wow. And both of them are a little, <laughs> not yeah. really. Oh, but, I've been on a deep well, dive I mean, with concussion stuff too. So yeah, yay, this it's is awesome. really incredible. Right. And so yeah. my brother Garrett is a um, naturopathic doctor in Orange mm. County, and he mm. developed this supplement also because in my family, 
you know, we need to get hit pretty hard for us to be like, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. So we've had car accidents and head injuries and all kinds of stuff that we had to take a step back and be like, maybe I'm on a, it would serve to be on a different path. But uh, my brother developed a supplement and it was developed originally for concussions and TBIs in order to help. It's the three best researched nutrients necessary to help with brain repair and function. And so that's the trans resveratrol, Mm -hmm. the turmeric and the fish oil, which is the EPA DHA and the genius about it. And it's why he's mom's favorite is because (laughs) we have functional MRIs showing that he's increased white and gray matter in brain from like old rugby players that couldn't even really sit down and read for longer than three minutes and had, uh, personality changes. And so now they're able to sit and read and be more loving and present with their kids. Right. And so that can come back into these adverse events of where your parent is just so tapped out. They don't have the bandwidth. Right. 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 But it's called cover three and he put it in a slurry because Mm -hmm. it's an orange creamsicle flavored, all like naturally uh, sweetened. Nice supplement that little kids can take and have no problem taking it because it's a liquid and it's delicious. And, um, yeah, so we were, it was developed for adults, but then we recognized that we, my, I have an eight-year-old and he was taking it just to make his brain better. And then we shifted over into kids nutrition, but where, where can I get it? How do we It's on Amazon, but it's also, you can look at cover3.com. The okay. kids is uh yeah, I love it's that. So it's, good for little baby brains. It's so and, funny. Was, and human brains. I'm ordering some like as soon as we stop because I was just and you're so right. Like you know my I have a, a ten and twelve year old that are kind of you know my older kids will take the supplements. I'm like I set them out for them every morning like <laughs> with with a drink. I'm like real quick, real quick, mm-hmm. tick 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 tick. But mm-hmm. like my younger ones, you know, it's like having some sort of gummy or something like that increases the likelihood yep. of them taking it like a hundred times. And that man, universe stuff. Uh, because I I have like a retired NFL client right now that we've been working on his brain, and so uh, everything you just listed, I'm like yeah everything but one, <laughs> yeah. but it was like to have that all together is really yeah. amazing. So thanks for sharing that. Okay. You're welcome. And it's synergistic, right? Because mm-hmm. the curcumin is fat soluble. So it helps with absorption and they all work together really mm-hmm. beautifully. So beautiful. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, Glad you mentioned that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank fam. you, brother Go team. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. But, um, I think that, you know, it's an interesting thing with growing up in trauma. There's all kinds of different trauma. I had a client this week who was severely sexually abused, right? And then you have other people who, you know, have trauma from, uh, you know, beatings or injuries or diagnoses or feeling like, you know, they don't do well at school. And so what are they valued for? And um, I think that you know, I've, I've given myself a little bit of grace with my son, who I think is a very privileged child because he's eaten only organic. He's got great supplementation, you know, like he's in a loving environment. But also, I think that the soul just comes in to learn certain things. And so he could be mad at me in 10 years because we both have the favorite color that's blue. And right. he could develop trauma around that. Right. Right. But I think that more importantly, you know, as children, we are blank slates of getting information. And then when you have a response that is wired into your brain, because that neurology happens over and over again, Mm -hmm. you know, don't ask a question or you get hit or show up perfectly, or you get shamed, then that lays down strategies of our behavior of how we not only get our needs met, but what that means about ourselves and even Mm -hmm. endocrinologically. So hormonally, if you're consistently under stress, there's brain changes that happen. And when they happen as a little kid, then, you know, they're much more difficult to reverse Mm -hmm. technically because they're Mm -hmm. so deeply hardwired, but also you have all of this endocrine, you know, cascade that happens to make you more, you know, of a hair trigger in response to stress. And it's complicated, but 
Mm. You know, the more of those you have as a child because of the hormones and probably cortisol and just the way that it, mm. you know, makes you more likely to be um, an addict or, you know. Are you talking about like adrenals, you know, like, are you talking about like sex hormones are affected by this too? Like, what do you, you know, have well, you seen? I think mostly it's like cortisol, right? Yeah. So if you have a cortisol dump, right. then cortisol raises your blood sugar and then your blood sugar can, you know, mm-hmm. raise, you know, inflammation in your body. And then that inflammation mm-hmm. can cause mm-hmm. like some dopamine, you know, right. hits. And then it's like, how do you manage them too? It's like, how do you manage these emotions that you're not technically allowed to really have? Mm. You know, we can look at like, nobody's really allowed to rage, even though we all have it within ourselves. You know, we're told, mm. especially women, right? But like, we're told, mm. oh, you know, don't get angry. Mm-hmm. You know, I you just know, raged right before this call. I was like, I need to breathe for a second because I, I fully own it now. I'm like, that I am mad about that. That is, uh, you know, so just, yeah, I still, I'm still a little mad about healthy. it and I'm going to process it. <laughs> I mean, it's super healthy, right? Yeah. But so many of us suppress whatever mm-hmm. it is we're feeling into mm-hmm. our bodies, right? It's like mm-hmm. body remembers, mm-hmm. body keeps score is another really good book. And, yeah. and so like when that happens, when you're little and you don't have the tools right. with which to process. Right. I, I, you know, I was just talking about my, my daughter is 17, my oldest. And I was just talking to her about this yesterday. I talked to him all the time. Cause I kind of went through a big awakening. I was very, very mm-hmm. like the typical programs, like using shame and they have to be perfect and they have to do everything I say, mm-hmm. you know, like, I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of mm-hmm. love, but there was a lot of that too. Sure. And so, you know, I was just telling her, I tell him all the time. I'm like, ah, oh, with her, I'm like, so just, you know, make sure I'm, I'm trying to like offset the damage. I'm like, it's okay. You don't have to ever be anything or do anything, any certain way to be loved, mm-hmm. you know? And I was talking about like subconscious thoughts with her and she's like, well, I don't really think stuff like that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I know it's so you, a subconscious. You don't even realize you're doing it, but you can use the conscious mind to, to repattern the subconscious through proactive, positive Re- self-talk of, Hey, that's okay, dude. Hey, you're doing great. Hey, good job. Mm-hmm. You can, you, mm-hmm. and that's kind of, you know, NLP, I guess, probably in hypnosis, you're totally. using the conscious mind with, but it has to be repetition. It's not like yeah. one time you're going to be nice to yourself. And now you just reprogram right. your subconscious. It takes, right. you know, a lot of work. Um, wow. Okay. So in terms of like, let's say somebody has a pattern. Uh, th- also, I'm sure we both see these patterns all the time, right? It's this, um, low self-worth. Um, I never feel like I'm doing a good enough job. I call it dangling carrot syndrome. It's like, no matter how well I'm doing in life, I could always be doing better. And I don't even really know what better is, but it's just anything I'm doing that I should be doing better, you know? And it's this chronic, like self-shaming, not doing a good enough job, putting these impossible expectations on oneself. Um, you know, inner bully is like super strong. And then Mm -hmm. they, and then they, bludgeon themselves with, Oh, I just am such a self-sabotage person. Like I, you know, and like that kind of really, uh, harsh, uh, unloving self-talk that I have so much compassion on. Cause you know, it comes from childhood stuff. And then you see adrenal dysfunction, thyroid dysfunction, gut issues, inflammation, you know? And so I'm just curious, like, you know, when somebody comes to you like that and you can see that in their soul, you know, just this hard on themselves, you know, what's, what, what's your path? Like, cause it's like, it's so, it's so many onion layers. I always say it's like that little skinny, little yeah. filmy thing on the, at a time, yeah. you know? And so like, yeah. if somebody's listening, you know, like what are some avenues, I guess you would recommend for healing for them? Cause they're probably going to come in on the health part, right? They've got adrenal stuff. They've got high blood sugar, maybe, or whatever body fat, right. thyroid dysfunction, you know? And so I think both of us probably attract people on that level. Like, okay, mm-hmm. just help me fix my adrenals. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you ready? Buckle up, baby. <laughs> We're going to go on a whole soul journey here. <laughs> you know, so right. could you share some, uh, I guess advice or, you know, recommendations for somebody that might be in that boat. Well, I love how you say it's a soul journey, right? Like to bring it back to what you said earlier, you know, like we, I believe that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience and there's Absolutely. something about the frequency of our soul that comes into 3d through our, yes. you know, genetic codes and whatever karmic implants we have to create this most marvelous yes. machine known in the universe, yes. like known universe. And nobody tells you how to drive it. 
right? Mm -hmm. So can, do I believe that the soul can heal anything? Absolutely. Yep. It's a lot easier if you give it what it needs in the 3D so it doesn't have to quantum manifest extra magnesium, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you can supplement people functionally and figure out like what are the deficits that they have yeah. nutritionally, hormonally, right. and be able to push them those pathways in the physical, like physiological, even like microscopic realm, it can lighten the general heaviness that yeah. they experience. Yeah. And I think toxicity to get a little bit woo woo yeah. in my experience, I think toxicity is some of the heaviest, most negative energy that we experience, right? And so toxicity can be like emotional toxicity, yeah. right? Like yeah. relationship toxicity. Right. Self-talk is a kind of toxicity, but then you bring in heavy metals, right? right? Which are super irritating and neurotoxic. So if you mm. don't have those, imagine how much lighter you could feel or mm. the hormonal dysfunction that we get. So I usually recommend detoxification just because whenever you detoxify the body of the things that are just throwing garbage into the system, yeah, then everything lightens. But yes. we do see that there's always an emotional response when you start to shift these chemicals out of the body then you can shine a light more on you know like oh i've been sticking all of that anger into my digestion for the yeah. last 20 years you know? yeah. <laughs> like and here yeah. it comes yeah. and so i usually do a detoxification first just to clear the picture and it also yeah. helps because people so often self medicate with food and even if it's just a little bit Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. It's because, you know, usually like our parents fed us and that was one of the first ways that we understood love. Yeah. Right. And self-care, yes. but also because it changes your neurochemistry and is a really pretty right. effective way of modulating right. your emotions and your yeah. responses to things. And you know, some of us, like we all have ways that we manage, right? So some people are super healthy and they do a great job exercising their you know, negative emotions away or emoting, right. Mm -hmm. Um, in a healthy way, but a lot of people have addictions, whether it's addiction to food or sex or, mm -hmm. um, video games or social media or, or, you know, alcohol, nicotine, mm -hmm. Adderall, like whatever that is, mm -hmm. right. That helps you to feel like you're functioning as normally. Right. 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 And I think that when you detoxify, you really clear the picture of all of this kind of garbage that you're surrounded by, by mm. just cleaning out your system. And I think that the further away we get from nature, then the more ill we become. And whether it's screens late at night and we're away from the circadian rhythms we're supposed to be totally. working on so or nice. <sighs> packaged foods right. and, you know, chemicals and weird things that are in all right. of our personal care products. And, mm -hmm. you know, they put flame retardants on baby pajamas that can be pulled into the oh. baby's body and is a known right. endocrine disruptor and possible carcinogen. Right. Oh, and so man. from the very beginning of our lives, we're filled and exposed to over 85,000 industrial chemicals, most of which have never been tested for human safety. Right. 85,000, you said? 80. 5,000 are on the EPA's yes. toxic chemical list. Wow. Wow. And it's, so do, it's amazing. Do you do a detox with everybody or are you like running tests Usually. or hair tests or you pretty much everyone? Um, I don't run. I know if you're living on this planet, you're toxic, yeah. right? Sometimes, <laughs> right. I, like, you know, one way or another, you just can't expose. Like even yeah. if you lived in a bubble, that bubble would be plastic. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I usually run, like if people are open to it, some are like, yeah, you know, let's try this first, but everybody will eventually do it for the most part. It's a huge cornerstone of what I do. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, after that, I definitely, I love tests and I love functional testing because it gives people, cause I've been doing this long enough that most of the time I know what's going on. But having mm. someone be able to look at it and be like, oh, wow. Mm. Mm. Okay. Right. Mm. I, and that's more motivating. 
in yeah. some ways to do yeah. that. Cool. So I think that if you clear the picture of the toxicity, supplement really well because most diseases come from either stress, inflammation, or toxicity and how they just deplete yeah. your body. Like you are what you eat. And if you're not repleting it, what are we going to replete it with? Like the food right. that we you know, are exposed to? I'm in California and we have some of the best food in the world, right? We're right in the bread basket of the US. Like we've got the best berries, the best, you know, like access to really good food. And it's still, you can't replete your body with magnesium from a food source and the amount that you really need to. No, not anymore. Soils are degraded. Exactly. That's why I was just having a conversation with a client, you know, she's like going on a trip and she's like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I'm packing so many supplements. I feel like an old person. And I was like, no, you're just packing food. (laughs) <laughs> Cause we, you know, like, it's just, we yeah. don't have, I just look at it as food because yeah. of our soils and I buy regenerative and I do my best, but like, you just can't yep. anymore. Like nope. that's the, like supplements are like just a reality check. If anybody, cause I hear this a lot. It's like, Oh, I don't want to take, I don't want to, you know, I just eat naturally. And I'm like, you need to wake up because you're living in la la land. I'm just being real. I, I would love if our world, if our earth was in a place where that could be the case. Yeah. It's not, yeah. unfortunately, we have like sometimes like 40 to 60% less nutrient value in your organic food that you're buying than right. we did 50 years ago on some things. <laughs> I have seen, I have visited a regenerative farm in Ohio and they run mineral analysis on all their stuff compared to the organic stuff and conventional stuff they buy at the grocery store. And we're, I'm talking zero selenium, almost no sodium. Mm-hmm. All, like we're mm-hmm. talking like barely little nubs on a chart mm-hmm. versus their stuff they're going to regenerate they're really working on it, but like, okay, are you buying a $150 box a month from some regenerative farm in Ohio that you can only get, you know, <laughs> like in these really rare circumstances? No, you're not. You're eating stuff from the grocery store. So I, sorry, I just had to go on a tirade about the supplementation because it's like, I, I, I see this resistance and I get it. And I wish that's how it was currently. It's not support regenerative. And in the meantime, take your freaking, find out what you need, right? Cause you might not need magnesium because something's going on in your genetics where you're just doing fine with right. that, but you might need selenium like a mother, you know? <laughs> so and you, anyway. probably I mean, you probably <laughs> yeah. do yeah. like those micro minerals and those, mm-hmm. you know, are massively important. Mm-hmm. for all of our processes in our Everything. body. It's your electric, yeah. especially the ones that are electrolytes that when, yep. you know, mix with water, turn into electricity. Like think mm-hmm. about that. If you're mm-hmm. missing your electrolytes, your electricity is down. Now your mitochondria, nothing can function correctly. And you go and get yep. stuff's going to go down. Yep. <laughs> That's just how it works. It's okay, really sorry. amazing. <laughs> no, not at all. <sighs> and then I think once you get someone, they're feeling more powerful right? They're feeling more positive just because you've given them the things to make their neurotransmitters function a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. And have their inflammation be lower and Mm -hmm. their body isn't quite as stressed, even Mm -hmm. physiologically. Right. And at that point, I think it gives them more bandwidth where they've gone out of survival, right? Like Mm -hmm. we've done the adaptogens, you've done the supplementation, you've, you know, you're educated about eating, maybe they're sleeping a little bit better, or they're at least wearing their, you know, yellow glasses so that they Mm -hmm. don't get so much blue light. Um, My partner has been on the screen a lot this week and his sleep scores are half of what they normally are. And he's wearing the glasses, right? So it's really interesting to look at these Mm -hmm. impacts, but then I think, it gives them a little bit more awareness and agency yeah. to start digging down a little bit deeper. And some, you know, mm-hmm. then I'll do a hypnosis. Usually hypnosis is great to really ease in because it's a visualization that you can put anything in, right? And so you can be like, well, What are these, you know, what are the habits that you would like to really be able to implement into your life? Or what are these negative, like negative emotions that you would like to remove from your day to day? And Mm -hmm. the cool thing about the unconscious is everything is a symbol. And Mm -hmm. so you can do a symbol of, you know, going into like a waterfall and a beautiful, Mm -hmm. you know, jungle and watch, you know, have that waterfall come down over the body and wash away the negativity, wash away the trauma, wash away the toxicity, right? Mm -hmm. And then you run them through, it's almost like a hero's journey, 
inside this visualization that's personalized for them. And I think that is a really great way to start opening up that process. Mm. A lot with weight loss is really, really stubborn weight loss, right? Like once you take, you know, balance the hormones, Mm -hmm. detoxify, get good, uh, protocols in place for how you're eating and how you're exercising. If it's a really stubborn weight loss, then that Mm -hmm. usually goes down into trauma, Mm -hmm. right? And what are you protecting yourself from? Like, what are you insulating yourself Mm -hmm. from, from the world? What do you not want the world to be able to see? Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's really heavy, delicate stuff Mm -hmm. and having a safe place to go in and not have to talk about it. You know, like sometimes I think therapy just like reinstalls everything where it's like, yeah, this is your story, right? Right. Like this is your story. Like this happened to me and this happened to me and this happened to me. I'm like, I'm like in a lot of therapy, right? Like I've been in a lot of therapy. I know exactly why I am, why I, how I am. And now what, right? Like now what do I do about it? Like what am I just going to like? be sad and hurt about that all the time? Or am I going to be able to pull it out of my body in some way and let it go? And because the mind is so symbolic, you can do these processes and they can not only like open up the rewiring of, you know, maybe I don't have to go down that super highway that I've been doing since I've been seven. Maybe there's another way around. Mm-hmm. And then how do I strengthen the neurology of that other way around by implementing this, you know, habit and having an accountability partner that'll make sure that I'm continuing to do that. And mm-hmm. um, that's why coaches are so incredibly powerful, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so much accountability is it's the magic of medicine. Nothing will, you know, if you want to take a magic pill, Uh, sure, we we still have to find it. But having that showing up and Mm -hmm. committing to yourself and having a positive, you know, Mm -hmm. message of support and love and acceptance, and you can do it right is such a beautiful, powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And there are ways there's tricks in neuro linguistic programming that you can go in and release like roots of things. Um, as far as the shame and have people go bought back almost like what's the first time you remember feeling that way? Let's go back there. Look at it from a couple of different perspectives. How did this actually serve you? Mm -hmm. And can you let it go? Like, can you just know that you can let this go recognize that it made you stronger? It made you more resilient. It made you able to do these other things. Like what are the gifts that come from this wound Mm -hmm. and how do you, Mm-hmm. Like heal that wound, knowing that you still carry forward those gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, I find breath work to be a very powerful wow. agent in that process too. Like holotropic yeah. breath work, like the full on rhythmic breathing for like 45 minutes to an hour. Cause for me, that one has been one, it's just stuff comes up out of the subconscious, just all by itself. And there's something about like, so if listeners haven't done it, you generally like kind of like breathe in into your stomach, into your chest and let it go. So it's like, in, in, let it go in, in, let it go through your mouth. Right. And it's something about the letting go. Well, first you're oxygenating like crazy. So I don't know. I find that it's, there's some sort of, it's very easy for me to just, Oh, I get it now. Right. So something will pop up out of my subconscious. Like, Hey, you're a little bit off here. You don't need to be angry about that. Or you don't need to worry about that. Or that's not your responsibility or that's in the past. Just let it, it's just this and let it go. And it's like, I just, it's just, done when I'm done. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I get it now. You know? So yeah, all of these things to bring awareness to what's going on, you know, therapy is a, it's a, Hey, it's a step. It's a, it's awareness, you know? Um, and then again, going into, yes. Okay. I see. Oh, I feel what it feels like to let that go. Wow. That feels good. If I let that waterfall, just wash all this. It's just, yeah. everything is like a little step towards yourself. And Mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, one of the greatest gifts I can ever do as a coach is encourage someone to go be in silence by themselves out in nature. That's it. Go cry, go feel, go clear your mind, let thoughts, it's just whatever, whatever happens, you know, and anything that, and that's what you're doing too, is you're just turning people inside back inside, like just nurturing the inside, nurturing the soul, nurturing the body. Yeah. And I, I have to highlight what you said about detoxifying and, um, getting the body right first. I've definitely learned this too. It's like, man, you know, if your hormones are off 
or you have, you know, like some sort of crazy toxicity going, you got mold toxicity or something going on and you're sitting there, especially hormones. I feel like, like if you got way hormones or way, you're sitting there, you're trying so hard to like be big and process. It's just so hard. It's just so unnecessarily difficult. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the, the quote unquote mindset, when you can get those optimized by working with, with somebody like Heather. And now all of a sudden it's just like, oh, I'm just actually not really that hung up on that anymore. Yeah. Like I'm good. You know, that's yeah. how it can be sometimes. Right. So that Absolutely. is a smart thing to do first, like make sure the body is online, but then if you don't heal the emotional stuff, you just recreate the same problems right in the body over and over right. and over through the cortisol being released through the. Yep comforting yourself with crappy food because you yep. haven't, you know, gotten the self-love to realize that eating crappy food isn't really self-loving, you know, isn't, isn't comforting. Mm -hmm. It's wait a minute, maybe sweet potatoes yeah. with butter and really good salt and some salad and olive oil. Yeah. And that maybe that's comforting. Cause that's right. good and honoring of me. Right. Like, Oh, okay. Oh, I should, I, I need more sleep. I'm going to, I'm going to sleep, you know, like I need, I deserve sleep. I deserve rest. I, of course, of course I'm, you mm -hmm. know, and so that's what the, that's other stuff that you're doing leads people to that place of not recreating yeah. the same problems in the body. Yeah. So really, really good stuff. Um, okay. I wanted to talk about like, I know people are probably like, um, it's always, they hear these conversations, like, what do I do now? You know? And so yeah. you have some courses, right? Like if they wanted to start that route, can you talk about that? So. I did it because I was saying the same things a hundred million times. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all my resources and, too. I'm like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's, it's in the paper. <laughs> and also because I think, you know, like I work, my primary job is to work with, you know, like CEOs and entrepreneurs to really optimize mm -hmm. their power and their vitality so that they can bring these big visions to mm -hmm. fruition right? With energy and mm -hmm. not have, you know, their, their um, work suck their right. life away. Right. Um, but also so that they have clarity of mind and energy and just optimize business performance. Yeah. And they need a lot of support there. I always say they're like a lot of support. professional athletes in business. exactly like you need exactly. a lot of recovery, like, That's exactly <laughs> like the right. NBA players. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because one of my first jobs was working with optimizing professional athletes. Mm. And in uh, yeah. the NFL and the UFC primarily, right? And oh, so now wow. it's more about Ooh. like business and fashion mania. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, no kidding. And um, so I recognized that I had all of this experience in how to really effectively detoxify people mm. so that their hormones work better and they're under nice. less oxidative stress and they sleep better. And I had one client tell me a couple of years ago, I didn't even know I had brain fog until I did this. And I was like, oh my God, right. <laughs> my brain really works. Totally. Right? Most people don't. And so I kind of took myself out of the equation so that it was more available to everybody time, yeah, just right. the amount of time that I had. And so it goes through a full detoxification of your life, whether it's emotional or cool. toxicity or inflammatory with mm -hmm. food. And it's, uh, I'm really, really excited about it. And so you can either mm -hmm. do it just as the educational piece and really uncovering the why. And so I built in yes. neuro-linguistic programming and awesome. coaching into it as far as like, why do you want to do this? How is your life going to be different? You know, like, let's remember that for when it gets a little hard and you want to go back into this default programming, that's just feels more comfortable. How are you going to commit to yourself again? Nice. And then you know, this is how you go through your personal care products and recognize whether they're poisoning you or not. Like this is how you can just take away a lot of the stress that's on your body day to day. So you have more bandwidth to do the things that you yeah. really care about. Yeah. Cool. We'll link that. It's a uh, courses. Awesome wild with the e vitality.com. Yeah. So we'll, we'll link that on there. And then you have like a, a, a functional health assessment. What does that mean? Yeah. So it goes through and has somebody really look at how they, their body's working. Right. Mm -hmm. So some, I think a big thing that I don't want to get away from the last little section that we talked about was people aren't embodied. Yeah. I They're know. dissociated. 
Totally. You know, and we learn this from the very beginning of our lives where it's like, oh, this is uncomfortable. Mm. Well, I'm going to distract myself with this or, Mm. you know, I don't feel good, but God, I have to go and finish that product project or, you know, oh, I just ate that and it hurt my stomach, but it was easy. And now I've got these, whatever, I've got these six other things that I have to do. And so we're so infrequently actually embodied because Mm -hmm. it brings up those, you know, layers that you're like, um, you haven't loved yourself in 12 years or, you know, like this relationship is killing you or, you know, like when was the last time that you fed yourself well in a way that you felt good and you made that a priority. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when you are able to go through an assessment and like, how is my digestion really working? Right. Right. Like Mm -hmm. how often do I really feel, you know, nauseous or, you know, GERD and acid reflux or bloated. Right. And so like, let's look at that. And then do you take over the counter medications for allergies and pain? And like, it's, we're taught that, you know, just take a pill and get on with your life or so often conventionally. And so what it does is it goes through the different markers of health. It kind of shines a light on, you know, how do you really feel How do you wish you felt, Mm. you know, and how do you make, you know, goals into movement and what are you committed to as far as like, how are you going to support yourself in positive ways? Mm -hmm. And so that's just a fun little thing that you can go through and score, um, which is fun. Awesome. We will link that up also, uh, (laughs) functional health assessment. And yeah, I, you know, I've been spending a lot of time in silence a lot lately. Like it's very hard for me to be on social media, like at all, like I'm kind of like, how long can I keep doing this? Cause I don't really, it's just, once you get used to being in silence and with yourself a lot and in the moment, it's, it actually becomes hard to want to be out of the moment. Like I don't want to, I want to be, I, yeah, I got 20 texts and I just, I'm like, no, I, I don't, I'm with my kids right now. Or honestly, I'm just in silence making food and I'm enjoying that. And I don't want to disassociate, you know, and like, yeah. um, just, I just got back into lifting weights. Cause I broke a rib a few weeks ago and I'm, you know, just getting back into it. And I, you know, I, I used to get on my phone in the middle of workouts. And I was like, I, it's changed, you know, I just don't want to. And as I sat there and just felt my shoulders, like I get, it's just, it's, there's so much information being given to us all the time from our bodies and our souls constantly, if we will just not disassociate, like all the answers, all the information, it's just so easy. I wouldn't have noticed my shoulders, like totally the way I would have, if I would have been like checking texts and messaging, I would have ignored them, you know? And so just to like, yes, really reinforce what you said, like just encourage anybody listening to just be with yourself more be in silence more. It's it, it, you will get comfortable with it. And if it's hard, be in nature or bring the sounds of nature into your home. I just got running water. I'm getting a canary because wow, those things are amazing. It's like meditation music in your house all the time. Um, you know, bring those comforting sounds in and like the more we are with ourselves, the more we will find the, the answers. It's just, they're all there waiting for us. But sometimes you have to go through that discomfort of like, wow, I feel shame a lot. I had no idea. I feel shame a lot. I guess I'm going to have to feel shame a lot. Like, you know, and, and I love that you're, you've created these tools to be able to help people like identify that. Cause yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure you get the same thing. I'm like, so do you have gut issues? Uh, people will be like, maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. And I'm like, I poop once a week. That's fine. Right. Right. And I'm like, well, what's going on? And yeah, exactly. That kind of stuff. Well, I get like super bloated when I have wine. I'm like, okay. You know, and it's like so much compassion, but I'm, it's just the fact that people aren't, they're just blow, just steamrolling right past that. You know, it's just like, oh man, if we can just spend a little more time with ourselves, nature is the best place to do it. Just be, just be, just stay off our phones, just be with ourselves, just make food, just eat your food. Just look at your cat, just look at your kids in their eyes and just sit on your couch and do nothing. Like, Holy crap. Like you, it's like the answers are all there. It's just waiting for you, you know, but you're, you're creating really, um, helpful facilitation to help people get back into that place. Cause a lot of people just aren't going to, they're so stuck in those patterns of, Oh, I guess I'm going to scroll TikTok for two hours tonight. Mm-hmm. 
instead of fuel yes. anything. It, it's yes. like, sometimes we need facilitators. We need doctors. We need healers. Yep. You're a healer, like you're, you're beyond doctor, you know, we need healers yeah. to help bring us back home to ourselves. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for connecting to your heart, your soul, using your intelligence that you were able to bring into this planet, collabing with your brothers, you know, like, right. wow, like, cool. Thank you for doing this the way that you have, because we need it. We need it. We need a lot of healers on the planet right now. So thanks yeah. for showing up. <laughs> well, it's really, I mean, I definitely feel like it's my calling. Yeah. And I'm really lucky to get to do something that I love so much mm-hmm. and call it work. Mm-hmm. And also just in my own journey, being able to reflect back that it can be done, right? Like there's an incredible bravery that it's necessary to really look in the mirror and love yourself, which, and commit to doing something different. And, you know, being able to sit in your body and feel, God, Mm -hmm. I am powerful. And this feels good. Yeah. What a gift. Yeah. And love and love will come, you know, love will come. I have found just feeling my feelings, just not doing anything about them, not mindset yeah. coaching, not analyzing, nope. like, nope, it's not the mind's turn. It's the emotions turn. Okay. Yeah. Emotions be mad, be sad, feel depressed, yeah. feel like overjoyed, feel whatever, just feel, 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 yeah. especially those uncomfortable ones. And then that is love. That is self-loving is to allow yourself to just feel without judgment, without yep. trying to change it, uh, anything, yep. you know, just honoring that. So yeah, it is. It's, you know, it's a journey for all of us, but I, I, I live in that space too, you know, and it's, it's wonderful. It's like, there's so much ease in that space, so much ease, you know, it's just one moment at a time and that's it. Um, okay. You got the best website ever, girlfriend. <laughs> Her website is naturopathicmd.com. Like, wow, good yep. job. Yeah. <laughs> and you're you're also naturopathic MD on Instagram if you guys want to find her there. Any last words of wisdom? Well, I guess don't give up. Yeah. Really yeah. persevere. It does get better. I had a client. Then this week, and he's, you know, just having, he feels like there's just something wrong with him. Mm. And there's like, there's just some genetic lottery he lost. And I was like, this is our process. You're human. You know, life, being human is a terminal disease. How do you want to live it? Right? Like, how do you want to live it? I love like, that. Let's live it with like joy and happiness and, you know, concentrating yes. on what is beautiful about it because it really is a gift. And so, you know, and it's, it's nothing grows without adversity. And so just keep waking up and keep doing it and, you know, allow your soul to shine through in the gift that only you can give to the rest of humanity. And your growth brings us all that gift. Yeah. And your growth is love. You know, it's just loving yeah. yourself, our greatest yeah. gift to give anybody just yeah. happens through the nuances when you work on loving yourself, because yeah. those little things you share in the nuances, people are like, ah, oh, okay. It's uplifting, you know, and you're yeah. kind and you're gentle and you're empathetic and you're supportive and you choose to create things in the world that are aligned and beautiful yeah. when you love yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Because uh, if you don't love-, love yourself, you can't love others. You can't, and you just, mm-hmm. it, it, and it, you, your body can't thrive either. If you, no. if you hate it, I, I mean, I've had clients, I, I'm sure you've had patients. It's just like, we've gone from like these like uncurable chronic, you know, autoimmune stuff to gut yep. issues, the thyroid adrenals, everything's yep. a mess. Do they just start, they knock off all the labels and all this, everything's wrong with me yes. and my body's yes. all messed up and they just start. Yes let that go and just start loving on themselves and listening. Oh, you need more sleep. Okay. Oh, that hurt you stomach. Oh, I hear you. I won't do that again for a while. Oh, what do you want? You want some, uh, some more protein, oh, less protein. Oh, okay. Seriously. Like just that process. And now all of a sudden Absolutely. it's just like, it's, you know, obviously they're eating well and all those things, but I can't even believe it is like magic is just having people just loving on themselves, loving yep. on their body. Like instead of being like, oh, stupid body, my hypothyroidism ruining my life, right. uh, right. thorn in my side. Right. They're like, 
I love you. I'm with you. I hear you. You got this, you know, we're doing this together. That, that is the path to healing, you know? And so, yeah, I love your encouragement to just don't give up and, 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 and just love, love on yourself. Like you, okay. You have all these trauma responses. Just love on yourself, love on yourself because the hate will never get you there. It will never, you cannot thrive with hate. Nothing thrives in hate. Nothing thrives Mm -hmm. in rejection and neglect and blame and all of that. So love, 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 love. Agreed. Wow. So awesome to meet you. Um, guys, please check out all of her stuff. Thank you for, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom with my audience. I really appreciate the voice that you're giving it. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you.